unseen for over a century, an incredible photographic collection of a family and community is being seen for the very first time. Once believed lost, the images were taken by a pioneering Ulster Scots photographer, and now her family is delving into her past to examine her extraordinary legacy. I had no idea that they were going to be so fascinating. They're about life, but also about the genius of this woman who was one of Ireland's earliest lady photographers. I think what's important is just that window into the past that people get to see with these unique photographs. Photography is about developing an image. She reveals these images and now from our perspective we can see the Ulster Scots community in the making. Galgorm Castle in Ballymena was a much-loved home to Mary Alice Young. Born in 1867, she was a member of a well-known, wealthy County Antrim family. She was my great-grandmother, and she was originally McNaughton from uh, Dunderav in Bushmills. And uh, she was married to my great-grandfather, Willie Young, and the Youngs made their money through the linen trade uh, in the early 1800s. They had an office in uh, St. Petersburg, another office in New York, and, and an office in Chile. So as uh, linen manufacturers, they were very forward thinking. And then they bought Galgorm in 1850. Castle life in those days was very different in that it was a whole community that used to survive and operate and be employed around the castle. Jane, come on in and I'll show you the books. Sure. Christopher Brook is building a fuller picture of Mary Alice's life with the help of the local museum manager. She was a great diarist and she wrote in her diary every day. And just to read one of the quotes here, 1914 was a bleak year. Irish politics reached boiling point with the militant woman suffragettes on top doing all the destruction they could. And while she was a suffragette, she was very anti-violence. Yes. And just looking at some of the things that she's written down as quotes, experts know everything that is known and don't want to know anything that isn't. Well, <laughs> yes, that's quite amusing. Uh, and all her diaries, um, apart from this one, um, when she became old, she then took them down to Port Russia, she threw them in the sea. She's very much a woman of her times. So she would have been brought up in a big house family and in that social set, there would have been a range of attributes that ladies would have to have shown. So they'd have to have been able to um, draw and maybe speak a little bit of French and show their musical accomplishments. But photography seemed to be an acceptable pursuit. And Mary Alice Young seemed to have a real passion and interest for photography. But how she chose to take her photographs and what she photographs makes her special. A lot of her photographs are taken in the late 19th century and pre the First World War. And so much we know changed with the First World War. So she's kind of recording a moment in time, a time that's going to slip away. So it's a very exciting journey of discovery for us as we learn more about Mary Alice Young through her photographs. Mary Alice's interest in photography started in her early 20s. She had the resources to fund what started as a fashionable hobby but she quickly developed a flair for taking compelling images. Today, Christopher is visiting the public record office where the lost photos were rediscovered. Prony is the official archive for Northern Ireland. We have over three million records here, which is a huge amount, and a third of them come from private depositors. 
Christopher was in touch with me over another matter and I mentioned the photographic slides. The story in the family was that they had been destroyed or misplaced. So he was really, really excited to find out that they were here. So Christopher, here we have some of your family's papers, D3027. And here are the 48 boxes of glass plate negatives. So 1,100 glass plates, but of course, because they're glass plates, they're completely inaccessible to the public. So the first stage in the project is getting the glass plates cleaned and rehoused and then digitized. I just wanted to find out what they were, uh, how good they were, what they were about, and whether it would be possible to get access to them so we could ha have a look at them. I think people will be surprised by the collection. It's not just a record of Mary Alice Young and her family and her social circle. It's very much a record of the people in County Antrim and the surrounding areas. The glass plate is removed. The side is always up because that's the most sensitive part and can get scratched. So what I do is gently brush the emulsion side and then look at the glass slide to see whether it needs further cleaning. I can use a little bit of solvent and then it evaporates and then we put it in our new four flap enclosures so that when they stand up vertically in the new enclosures it's easy to find the one that you're looking for. They would have sat and they would have rotted away in the prony warehouse and maybe they would have stayed there forever. And I think it's important that these things are made available to the public. And I'm fascinated in history. And I'm fascinated in those people who recorded history and were equally interested in it. Alongside the quality of her photographs, Mary Alice's work has also attracted the attention of historians interested in culture and identity in Ulster. One of the most important things from an Ulster Scots point of view would be the fact that she's a woman and that in itself uh, is extremely important to have um, a, uh, perhaps not a voice, but at least an eye um, that is uh, uh, that of, a, of an Ulster Scots woman. Because over that period, the people who were producing the material uh, were male, and that's why her contribution is of such interest, because by necessity, she's looking at things in a different way, because it's at that period that we're getting, emerging a consciousness, an awareness of an Ulster Scots identity that coincides exactly with Mary Alice's lifespan. One of the problems to do with Ulster Scots is visibility, and that's why the ability to show images is in itself important and she's directly involved in the community and those are the ones which I would find most interesting. The ones of the turf cutters, the gardeners, the people working the fields around where she lived and the people are Ulster Scots. Now they're not walking around with tartans um, you know, and badges uh, saying I'm an Ulster Scot but basically that's what we're looking at. Time has taken its toll on much of Mary Alice's collection. Restoring and preserving her photographs is a meticulous process. These glass plates are being shot in our new super camera. Um, hopefully they're future proofed for the next generation to be able to see these things. And from those, then we have an, an accurate representation of what exactly we have. But as you can see, some of them are overexposed, some of them are underexposed, and some are broken. And this is what I like to call a jigsaw puzzle without a box. Individually, if you isolate each one of these fractures, put it together, and any gaps you can use with adding extra pixels and that, we're able to go to here 
Well, that is phenomenal. We say this was broken 100 years ago. It hasn't been seen. What you're looking at is the first time since they were taken to be able to see the image itself. And I think you'll see that the results are you wouldn't, splendid. You wouldn't have known that had been broken at all. And the next wee bit that I wanted to show you was what I can see is very early Photoshop. So this glass plate, Mary, is taken obviously from a nursery rhyme. Little Miss Moffat and her spider, which wants to create something around it. So th this wasn't really standard. This was people experimenting with the various different ways of how, how you could achieve what you wanted to achieve. Very much. There was no YouTube back then. Yeah. So she has used her techniques as such. What we don't have is her finished print, but I'm pretty sure she was using techniques to get this to finish to what I hope is what she was yeah. wanting yeah. to see. And then f finally, um, I find this fascinating. A photograph taken of a man and a horse. Now, if I wanted to take a photograph of a horse or a car, I can take up the 30 shots and then I'll pick that one. Back then she had to get a glass plate, put it into a box, set it all up, set it up, take the exposure. <laughs> you can only do it once yeah, and yeah. then the horse is away. It's lovely because when we first started this, I was worried that the pictures were going to be all of um, you know, gate posts and churches yeah. and gravestones or whatever. And I didn't expect to have such great sort of action shots of that quality. Mary Alice's photographic collection is not just an intriguing record of everyday life. There are intimate family photographs and artistically inspired images as well. Her camera also caught a glimpse of a period of turmoil. This photograph, taken during the Home Rule crisis, shows members of her family training with the Ulster Volunteer Force. Her husband, Willie, was involved in the dramatic smuggling of arms and ammunitions into Larn to equip a unionist force determined to resist home rule. So, Christopher, I thought we'd have a look at some of your family papers that are held here at yeah. the Public Record Office. As we know, Mary Alice married William Young, the eldest son of John Young, in 1893. So, we had a look at the count books for Galgorm. So here, there's an entry for February 1914, and it mentions Young for photos, yes. seven and six. Do you see that yes. there? I noticed, sorry, just to yep. drop one other interesting one, that yep. Rose, Rose Young, who was um, yes. a, a Gaelic speaker, and she, together with um, Margaret Dobbs and Ada McNeil, were known as the Ladies of the Glens. Oh, yes. And they did a huge amount towards saving the Irish language, culture, verse, yes. song. Um, around that time, so it's interesting that while the Youngs and Willie Young, uh, Mary Alice's husband, was bringing the guns in from Larn, Rose Young, his sister, was doing the Gaelic side. Was there yeah. tension, Christopher, with the Well, family? everybody always said there was, but the fact that she gets a, a monthly allowance mm -hmm. here yeah. and, and also that she's in the Galgorm Visitors Book is coming uh, at least um, once every two weeks to stay at Galgorm. Yeah, um, so it seems to seems to throw that out. Absolutely, relations must have been must have continued to be yeah. warm. So here we have a letter from the Secretary of the Admiralty to Sir Francis MacNaughton, and it relates to a naming ceremony for the HMS Antrim. And Sir Francis has nominated his daughter, Mrs. William Young of Galgorm Castle. Now, even though these engagement diaries are later in date, they just show what a busy woman she was with either the school or the church or girl guides or whatever. She was a counsellor and she was an extraordinary lady because she believed that women should have their say and women should do uh, and have their place in the world. And women's job was not to sit and, and, and do crochet and keep quiet and, uh, and agree with everything their husband said. No, she was a strong lady. She was very involved in music in the local area. She was very involved in the scouts, in choirs. And she was actually one of the first women to get a convertible Vauxhall car, which she used to drive around Palomino. 
A selection of Mary Alice's photographs are being carefully chosen by Christopher's family and members of the public records team. That's uh, interesting. Yeah, number 71. Yeah, we've got a drummer boy. Okay. You can decide. Or here's maybe a better one with the, with the lady playing tennis. Where is it? Valley Castle. Today is the first time really anybody's been through them in this sort of detail. It's revealed the most fantastic photographs from an incredible photographer. So from that point of view, I think it's, it's dynamic. Uh, we're in C20, this is number one. I know we have some other ploughing The shots. images will soon be revealed to the public for the first time in over a hundred years. Uh, this is number six, Gareth. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's a cracker. That's well, I've been excited about them ever since I heard oh, yeah. they turned up because my mother thought she'd completely lost them. And yeah. that'll be, definitely keep that, because that'll be Belfast yeah. or Lyme. That's 80. And seeing them, I mean, they're just extraordinary. Like Christopher, I thought they might be quite boring, but they're wonderful family groups, and best of all, the social history and all the things that went on, and to see it photographed like that. I know you can go to a museum and see it, but it's not quite the same seeing what your relatives took. I think definitely keep that. Yep, that's number nine, we'll keep I think Mary Alice had a very special eye. Some of her photographs are very unique. There is a real artist's understanding of use of light. When she photographs working people, you feel that she's not distant from them, that she's there in the moment with them, and she has an empathy and sympathy for their lives. It's almost like a, a flash photography. Yeah. But it's using natural light. Cause it's Quite a few of Mary Alice Young's photographs are humorous, they're witty, they're intriguing, there's a slight air of mystery to some of them, and they also are a good social documentary for the Times. This is a very interesting time for photography and the development of photography and the whole style and the function of photography. Originally, photography would have been seen as, as one of the fine arts and they would have been trying to emulate what painters of the time would have been doing. Portrait photography would have taken over from the old portrait paintings. But at that point, during the 1880s up until about the 1910s, you can see a shift from photography being purely a creative artistic function to becoming much more um, to do with photojournalism. I can see a lot of influences of different artistic movements in her photography. You can see how she would have been influenced by the pre-Raphaelite painter movement. Um, you can see the influence of artists such as Rossetti and Mele and um, Holman Hunt. They would have painted women with lovely long flowing locks of hair um, in quite naturalistic surroundings. And she's tried to emulate that type of style in a lot of her photographs. You can see the influence of the Impressionist painters as well. Um, there's one image that Mary Alice Young took of a young girl with a watering can in the garden at Galgorm Castle. And there's a very similar painting by Auguste Renoir. But then there's other artistic movements she would have been influenced by, such as some of the Flemish painters like Vermeer. Some of the interior shots that Mary Alice Young took of people doing domestic chores, such as there's one of a, a girl baking in a kitchen setting, the light flooding in through the window from the left-hand side. She's really trying to capture that master of light. There's so many lovely photographs in the collection, but it's great to know who's who. I like to find out that a lot of the children in the images, you know, one of them is Mary Alice's daughter and she captured children in her family and in her, her friendship group. And some of those are really beautiful. The portraits are just so personal and intimate. The interior shots, you get to see what life would have been like and what people's drawing rooms and just the different way that they would have done the interior design in those days as well. And it's just how they would have left it and, how, and very lived in looking. And then we saw some monograms on some of the photographs where obviously she'd put her own ones that she particularly liked, like the image of her bedroom and all the, the shoes lined up underneath her dressing table. It's just so insightful. It was really special to find that.
We're just going to head up now to Dundarav, which is where Mary Alice lived before she moved to Galgum Castle. And on the way, you'll see a, a number of the locations where um, Mary Alice um, took her photographs. And it's interesting to see how the countryside has changed from then until where it is now. Keith, wonderful to have you here, because you know the history in more detail than I do. I have the family history, which is really very colourful and, and wonderful. Some of the facts actually might not be quite correct. Sure, well, I mean, I've done some research, so we managed to put together a direct line from you right back to the first McNaughton to arrive here in 1580, Shane Dew, a.k.a. John McNaughton. Now, he's uh, reported to have married the sister of Sorley Boy McDonald and that helped them establish the family here. But they came from Western Scotland, so that's the big Scottish link. The, uh, the first baronet would have been your great, 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 great grandfather, Francis Workman McNaughton. Now he took them, would have been responsible for building Dunderab House. Yeah. And, and yeah. we can trace your family here, right back, there's your parents. So you've got a strong heritage, and uh, it grounds you right here. I mean, they were a fascinating family, the McNaughtons. Yes, one of your particular interests is, is Mary Alice McNaughton and uh, possibly even her mother, Alice Mary Russell, because her father was uh, quite well known in his own right. I believe you know about Yeah, Willie Russell. that was William Hard Russell. Yeah. He's highly recognised as, as being, as I say, one of the great war correspondents oh, yeah. ever yeah. in history. Yeah, I mean, he changed the whole attitude towards war correspondence and, and reporting and influenced people like... Uh, Florence Nightingale and Mary Seacole, and they went out and started to do their good work. And uh, Mary Alice's father, Francis Edmund, Workman McNaughton, would have known his future wife through Willie Russell, because indeed he married Willie Russell's daughter. And he would have been 20 years older than his young wife. Uh, it doesn't appear to have been a very happy marriage. No, it, it, it wasn't. Um, he was 20 years old, as you say, and she, she took a fancy to the land agent. So she left her picture was turned to the wall and she was never spoken about again. And of course, Mary Alice grew up here. Her childhood was here until she married and then went to live in, at Galgorm Castle. Yes, I, mean, I would say she had a relatively privileged upbringing, obviously, coming from such a family. But at the same time, we can't overlook the difficulties in her parents' marriage, a very public, scandalous Victorian divorce. Um, and then later in life, she lost two brothers in India in the forces, miles and miles away. And uh, in the First World War, of course, her, her two cousins, her two young cousins were killed in 1916. So I think those hardships would have shaped her life, shaped the woman that she became. And uh, she certainly would have had a lifestyle that many people would have liked, but it came with difficulties. Mary Alice's innovative photography style has prompted Christopher to discover what another aspect of restoration might bring to her pictures. It's breathtaking the quality. I mean, there's so much information, there's so much detail, but you have to go through the entire image and remove all dirt and scratches because you need a clean image when you're colorizing. So what's extraordinary is when you zoom in on the watch, you can see that it's 25 past 10. You can even 10. see, yeah, you can see the, the time. You would not be able to do that with a, a standard digital camera or phone. You just do not get that level of detail. So let's just take a couple of these images and see what we get here. Right, this wow. is a good example of, in the original scan, what colour would that car be? I have no idea. So I made the creative choice here of keeping the car black so that the image goes straight to the woman and the, the passenger in the back of the car. Now, every image you do creates its own problems. In the original black and white image, there was a lot of damage and there was exposure problems. The woman or the girl in the photograph, very difficult job getting her flesh tones right. So I had to do a lot of work to tone her down so that it looked like a natural beauty sitting on the bridge enjoying a, a lovely day.
After many months of research, planning and painstaking restoration, the collection of Mary Alice Young's original black and white images is almost ready to open to the public. Christopher is getting the first viewing of the exhibition. These are all great-grandparents, great-great-grandparents and grandmothers and aunts and great-great-aunts. So it's a little bit emotional uh, coming in here and seeing all these people uh, relations come to life. But it's a clarity that is fantastic. When you think 120 years ago or maybe 130 years ago and to be able to produce photographs like this by any standard, even today's standard is amazing. Gal Gorm has always been a major part of Ballymena and the Ballymena story. And this is another part of um, Gal Gorm that we're able to give back to Ballymena. We're looking into the future and how will Northern Ireland be shaped. So it's important for us to look at important milestones in its past. And Mary Young's photographs help us to do that. But also I think she's a good role model. She's a strong, independent woman and she's committed to what she wanted to achieve through her photography. When you look at this body of work, we have got to have that kind of recognition for aspects of Ulster Scots culture. But more importantly, I would say, what I would hope is that young people, young women um, in particular from the Ulster Scots community um, here in Ballymena might themselves be inspired to work on the material that she has produced in some way. Well, I mean, what a wonderful journey it's been. From really two years ago, when, when we first discovered that these glass plates were in storage and were actually never going to be seen, because that was the issue. And I mean, one has to say, she was an extraordinary photographer. She was a very early one, and she experimented with lots of things, with light and movement, and really advanced in those days. I never met Mary Alice. I'd always heard about her, I'd heard stories about her. And just to sort of finish this journey, I'd like to read you a passage from her last diary. She said, I've been very ill and can't recover my courage and vitality, which I feel is gradually ebbing away. I've enjoyed writing this journal sometimes, and now it's all ending. I've had a full and happy life, full too often of my own mistakes but I have enjoyed it all, and now I must say goodbye. And with that it ends. <laughs>